Good Friday evening, May 10th, and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. Douglas County power users will see an average increase of around $3 per month on their residential bill in the next two years. Apple Blossom Festival officially kicked off in Manson today with a variety of fun events planned for festival attendees all weekend long. Near record highs possible tomorrow with beautiful summer-like weather expected for Mother's Day as well. All the details coming up in your local weather forecast. Forecast. A lawsuit by two former employees accusing Chelan County of wrongful termination has been thrown out by a Douglas County judge. Kristen Larson and Angel Hallman saw their positions in the county's Community Development Department eliminated in 2020 and claimed it was retaliation for their complaints against a male supervisor. Chelan County alleged that its auditor's office, headed by Skip Moore, was never served with an appropriate summons in the case as required by law. Douglas County Judge Brian Huber agreed and on Wednesday he awarded summary judgment to Chelan County. The case was dismissed with prejudice, meaning it cannot be brought against the county a second time. Douglas County power users will see an average increase of around $3 per month on their residential bill over the next two years. PUD commissioners voted on the increase Tuesday, citing the increases they foresee in power demands as more electric vehicles and bigger industrial customers come online. Besides residential rates, commercial customers can also expect an increase of about $6.40 per month. Right now, the PUD sells excess power from Wells Dam to subsidize local customers, but that may change as local demand goes up. The increased billing goes into effect January 1, 2026 and will remain in effect until 2030. Transportation crews will be doing pavement work on the Douglas County-owned sections of the Apple Capital Loop Trail coming up on Tuesday, May 14th. The work will address tree root damage, repair sinkholes, and seal cracks. In the morning hours, crews will be working from 3rd Street south to the parking lot at Hydro Park, and then in the afternoon, work will shift to 19th Street northeast and move north toward the Otabashan Bridge. Work crews will place signage ahead of the impacted areas, and there may be certain sections of the trail where users will need to use the shoulder. The Complete the Loop Coalition awarded Douglas County with supplemental grant funding to pay for the trail work. The Chelan County vicinity continues to see forest damage from beetles that feast on pine, spruce, and fir trees. Western pine beetle, balsam bark beetle, spruce beetle, and the fir engraver beetle are all found in Washington forests. And the latest forest health report from the Department of Natural Resources finds that tree populations in Chelan and Okanagan counties are among those that suffer most. Surveyors say the highest concentrations of lodgepole pine mortality from mountain pine beetles in Lodgepole has occurred in high elevation areas of Chelan, Okanagan, Yakima, Kittitas, Ferry, and Pend Oreille counties. Among bright spots in the report, there's been no new infestation of the tussock fir moth, which severely damaged fir trees in Kittitas, Chelan, and Okanagan counties in 2018. When we come back, Albanachi Elementary School teacher has been inducted into the Washington Music Educators Association Hall of Fame. And journey back in time to the Renaissance area at the 15th annual Two Rivers Medieval Fair this weekend. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. A walk on Wooden Avenue wouldn't be complete without a stop at the Chelan Chamber of Commerce. 
There you'll find all the information you need about local businesses, events, and activities across the entire Chelan Valley. Lake Chelan Sports is the place to find top brands like Hoka, Ons, Patagonia, and now a full line of Warrior products. With excellent customer service, Lake Chelan Sports has what you need. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. Mount Stewart Physical Therapy is all new. New staff, new therapists, and a fabulous new chiropractor. That's right, you do not need to drive to Wenatchee or Cashmere for your care. Come see Dr. Zolman, D.C. No referral needed for most insurances. Open your auto and work injury claims with us or fax your post-op and Medicare therapy prescriptions to us right here in town. We offer covered pelvic floor services. We are premium health care for the Upper Valley. Improve your quality of life today. Mount Stewart Integrative Therapy and Chiropractic. So, how's Evan? Well, he's all grown up now, but I worry about him. So many dangers in the world. COVID, the environment, the opioid epidemic. Yeah, I hear opioid misuse is on the rise. I don't even know how to start a conversation with him. This might help. Get the facts, rx.com. There's a whole section on how to talk about opioids with your family. Offer support, not judgment. Cool. Talk to your family about the dangers of opioids. Visit getthefactsrx.com. The Apple Blossom Festival officially kicked off in Manson today with a variety of fun events planned for festival attendees all weekend long. Starting things off today is the selection of the 104th Manson Apple Blossom Royalty. That'll happen tonight at Manson High School at 6.30 p.m. The fun run, which includes a 2K and 5K, will begin tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. on Highway 150. All runners are required to register online or in person. The Grand Parade will begin at 11 a.m. on Saturday and wind its way through the downtown area. The art show and quilt show will also be taking place over the weekend, along with a number of local sports tournaments. You can find more information on the Manson Apple Blossom Festival website. A Washington elementary school teacher has been inducted into the Washington Music Educators Association Hall of Fame. Tammy Lopashinsky was recognized as the outstanding music educator for the North Central region for the class of 2024. Lopashinsky was inducted during the WMEA State Conference in Yakima earlier this month and was nominated by fellow Wenatchee School District music teachers Garrett Snedeker and Ashlyn Dobbins. The Washington Music Educators Hall of Fame recognizes exceptional support, inspiration, and outstanding contributions to the growth and development of music education, according to a Wenatchee School District press release. Lopashinsky started teaching in the district in 1999 and will retire in June. Journey back in time to the Renaissance area at the 15th annual Two Rivers Medieval Fair this weekend. This Saturday and Sunday, the Chelan County Expo Center will house a myriad of old-time booths, food vendors, and performers. Attendees can enjoy dancing, jousting, and other family-friendly activities. Food vendors for this year include the Donner House, the Pickle Peddlers, Maj Berry, Potion Emporium, and more. Tickets are required and can be purchased online at Two Rivers website. Coming up next, after months of advocacy work, parents and supporters of Columbia Elementary School await the Wenatchee School Board's final decision on whether or not Columbia will close. More in tonight's feature story. Unseasonably hot weather on tap for Mother's Day weekend with near record high temperatures tomorrow. I'll have all the details coming up in your full local weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today and let's find your happy place. The Lake Chelan Rotary Club invites you to experience Cycle Chelan held each year on the third Saturday in June. Pick your thrill from three rides, the Metric Century Challenge, Cycle Divino, or the Lake Loop. All profits from Cycle Chelan are used to support student scholarships and other charitable activities of the Lake Chelan Rotary Club. 
Cycle Chelan, a route for every rider. Pick your thrill today. I think we already have the legendary pizza, really. And I hope it just continues. We have a free pizza slip. We get free pizzas. And if something happened to Abby's, we wouldn't have free pizza anymore. Think about that, huh? Oh, no. Yeah. Every day is Taco Tuesday at Abby's. Our Taco Especial is on sale seven days a week. Loaded with beef or chicken, onions, olives, tomatoes, cheddar cheese, and lettuce. It's a pizza that you won't forget. Dine in or order online for takeout or delivery right to your door. There's no place like home. Because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories. And we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. After months of advocacy work, parents and supporters of Columbia Elementary School await the Wenatchee School Board's final decision on whether or not Columbia will close. Members of the Columbia Parent Advocate Group have pushed back against the idea of closure since the announcement in January. After nearly 90 days of attending meetings, hearings, holding rallies, and reviewing district materials, the group will hear the decision on Tuesday. In tonight's feature story, two parents, Emily Bjork and Brittany Stevens, spoke to NCW Life News about their lingering concerns and discussed how they would react to a closure. I'll be very sad and uh, disappointed, but um, also try to refocus and be a, continue to be a positive influence on my children and in coordination with my husband to help our our child transition to Lincoln, which would be the school where we would um, be reassigned to. And then our daughter um, will not be able to go to school yet because she would be going to TK, but Lincoln doesn't have that opportunity for us if Columbia were to close. Yeah, we, we would be going to Washington um, and our, our children would be okay. Um, but I know that I'm saying that from a place of privilege as you know, someone who has a two-parent household with steady incomes and college educations and, you know, a loving family, and not every kid has that. So for us personally, like Emily said, we'll reframe and we'll get our kids excited for this new adventure that they get to be on. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's also a lot of repairing um, within the community that will need to be done, um, especially with you know, big elections coming up and, mm -hmm. um, you know, school funding just kind of being on the fritz across the state. I think it's really important that um, regardless of what decision is made, that the district recognizes that and makes a really strong effort to show up for their community. We are, our group's also significantly concerned about the school crossing areas. Um, you know, children crossing Miller Street in the morning at commute times, 7.30 to get to get to Washington and children crossing Ferry Street around the same time um, poses a huge safety risk. I know the city um, is working on coming up with a tentative plan should the school close to try to implement some safety changes and the, and the district has talked about hiring adult crossing guards. Um, but unfortunately, some of the bigger uh, safety projects like putting sidewalks all the way up Okanagan Avenue or installing school zone lighting, that kind of stuff, won't be able to be implemented prior to the start of the school year. And all that, as I understand it, is funded through grants, which have to be applied for, and you have to wait for that. So really you're looking at more of a two-year process, and um, the risk for children getting hit on that road is pretty high. So that's a huge, huge concern for us. I think another issue that, that we've been discussing a lot is just the, the size of mm -hmm. population that will be at Washington and Lincoln. From what I know of I, having taught in an elementary school before, um, a lot of those spaces that are not being used, you know, are, are being used for intervention and other, you know, great innovative ways that, that education has evolved over the years. And um, so I, I worry that our students won't be served the way that, that they will. Although the district does say that they will be served that way, so yeah. I don't want to spread anything or, you know, but um, it's just a concern that 
I haven't been fully convinced is not a concern yeah. yet. I think school districts need community support. Um, it's, you know, schools are the lifeblood of our society yeah. and having people who are there and paying attention and keeping track and then occasionally there to kind of steer, you know, mm -hmm. a wayward thing back into course. Um, it's, I, I think it's really valuable. So hopefully yeah. people stay in touch and aren't just like, okay, well that's done and I'm gonna <laughs> sign off forever you. and you know, wait till yeah. the next crisis and see what happens. <laughs> Let's take a check now of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a fantastic Friday and a good week all around weather-wise. Boy, no complaints. We started off awfully cool this week and by today, temperatures 15 degrees above where they should be. And what a day it was as we look out our weather window from a shot from this afternoon. This is our Waterville SkyFi Tower Canyon a camera rather looking back up the canyon. There's the Columbia River and you can still see just a little bit of snow on the tops of our mountains, but with temperatures expected to be 15 to 20 degrees above normal this weekend, it's probably going to go away. And we're talking near record highs for Saturday as we get you into the weekend, 80s and 90s. And I think we will come very close to 90 degrees in the Wenatchee area. We're just going to see a light breeze on Saturday. Some folks a little stronger, maybe gusts up to 15 miles an hour, if you can call that even a gusty wind. And then on Sunday for Mother's Day. Going to still be warm out there. Winds will pick up somewhat in the afternoon. I'm thinking about 10 to 15 miles an hour in Wenatchee with highs for Mother's Day generally in the mid 80s. So it is going to be a hot spring weekend coming up this weekend. Boy, it began today. 85 our unofficial high temperature and look at that 15 degrees above where we should be for this time of year and just 7 degrees below our record high of 92 and that was set in 2013. We started off the day very mild at 50, 47, our normal low, and our record cold, 36 degrees, and that was set back in 1970. Sunrise this morning, 5.30, and it sets for us tonight at 8.25. All right, let's get into those hot Saturday temperatures. 90s in the Columbia Basin for Moses Lake, Afreda, and Quincy. Didn't quite go there for Wenatchee. I do think we'll see 89, as will Eniat and Chelan. 90 up in Omac. That's where I'll be this weekend. Going to be a hot one. 87 in Leavenworth and 84, the afternoon high temperature. Beautiful if you're headed up to Lake Wenatchee. The reason, once again, high pressure off our coast, and that is providing some clear skies for us and those warm temperatures all coming up from the south. And we're going to see lows tonight in the upper 50s. That's right, very mild overnight tonight. And then getting you into Saturday, look at the clear skies up and down the West Coast. Unseasonably, let's just say hot for Saturday with high temperatures near 90. And that's really around the Tri-Cities, up to Wenatchee, even over in Spokane, mid to upper 80s. For Sunday, sunny skies. We will see a bit of a west breeze. A trough of low pressure is moving across southern Canada. That could, it could kick up a few uh, windy spots in the afternoon on Sunday, but generally mid to upper 80s. Enjoy the outdoors on Sunday. And now we're going to be talking some wind. Monday, partly cloudy skies, windy throughout north central Washington. We're talking 20 to 30 miles an hour on Monday, cooling down too with highs in the mid 70s. So that'll be quite a cool down for Monday. Tuesday, mostly sunny. And yes, we're still going to see those breezy conditions in central Washington. High temperatures mid to upper 70s for Tuesday and then for our midweek high pressure still in place but that low pressure trough is in southern Saskatchewan and that is really going to kick up winds again on Wednesday high temperatures warming up just a little bit though near 80 degrees for Wednesday and then by the end of our forecast on Thursday partly cloudy and look at the wind we expect on Thursday it could be gusts up to 40 miles an hour on Thursday with high temperatures in the upper 70s so by all means, enjoy this weekend. All right, seven-day forecast, 58 tonight, 
89 beautiful degrees tomorrow, 87 for your Mother's Day on Sunday with just sunny skies and maybe a west breeze. And then we're going to get into those windy days. In fact, Monday right through Thursday, going to cool down somewhat too, but stay above normal. 74 Monday, mid to upper 70s on Tuesday, 79 for Wednesday. And at the end of our forecast, wind on Thursday with a high temperature of 78. And that's a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Ruggability. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable rugged, capable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Books KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. EPA says Honda is the most fuel efficient automaker in America, but we like Ruggability, and you'll like the Increda Fantabulous deals, so see your Inland Northwest Honda dealer today. Honda can handle it. Happy finally Friday. The Mariners return home tonight to host Oakland, desperately needing to figure out how to put the bat on the ball. Minnesota blew out Seattle yesterday, 11-1 to take the three of four games in the series. The Twins put the game out of reach early with five runs in the first inning off Mariners starter Logan Gilbert. Gilbert has been a ground ball pitcher this season. Line drive, right side, base hit, right field. Julian will score. Lardick makes second. Twins take a 1-0 lead. A career-high 11-game hitting streak now for Max Kepler. Well, that breaks up the string of doubles, but it drives in a run, so I think he'll take it. Pulled fair down the left field line. Lardick is in. Kepler will score. Miranda has the green light. He will round. He will head home, and he will score. Manuel Margot, as big as hit as a twin so far, clears the bases. And the Twins have a 4-0 lead here in the opening inning. Santana hitless in this series. Until now, base hit right center. Margot is in. 5 nothing in the first. The Twins have taken advantage of those balls that have been in the zone. A lot of hard contacts, just putting together good at-bats, taking what he gives you, working through the big part of the field. One guy feeding off another, and when you're rolling like an offense like this, it really is that old cliche, hitting is contagious. Out towards right center field for a base hit. Hanniger is coming around third and scores standing. Luke Raley with two outs. Puts the Mariners on the board in the second inning. 5-1 Twins. He struck him out, and this one is over. Wasn't much to write home about in the series. The Seattle struck out 54 times in four games. Manager Scott Service was pretty disgusted by the outcome. We didn't deserve to even be in the game. We, we, didn't, we didn't play a good game, obviously. Really all series. Uh, the Twins outplayed us. They, they did. They swung the bat better. They pitched better. They executed better. Now you're hoping that Logan comes out and gives a chance in the game. He just, you know, for a leadoff walk, you look up, stolen base, and then they got things rolling. And, um, you know, um, not much to say other than, you know, they beat us bad in this game. We've been on a really good run here. I think we'd won six series in a row before this one. Uh, we have to wash this one away. Uh, we just didn't play good baseball here, even though we did win one game uh, in this series. And again, there's a number of reasons for it. But, uh, you know, the, the thing that we rely so heavily on is our starting pitching. Um, hoping as we get our offense going. But, um, you know, it was a struggle all series for us. So. Again, got to let it go, got to wipe it away. We got home, uh, big home stand there with Oakland coming in, and, and they're playing really good, and Kansas City behind them. So uh, we'll have our work cut out of us for us here, uh, but it'll be good to get home, but disappointing series. You know, we knew the Twins were hot when we came in here, and um, other than the one game, we got some big hits late. We really didn't do much to cool them down. Seattle hosts Oakland in the first of a three-game weekend series tonight at T-Mobile Park. It's at 640. Brian Wu gets his first start coming off the injured list. The game will be broadcast on Root Sports Northwest. Well, Texas was idle yesterday, so the Mariners' loss is, uh, puts them a game and a half behind the Rangers at the American League West. Oakland sits in third place as they come into Seattle after a day off yesterday. The Angels fell to Kansas City 10-4. They're seven and a half games back. Houston beat the Yankees 4-3. They sit eight games out of first place. 
Eastmont ended Wenatchee's season in District 6 for a soccer last night, while Sunnyside surprised Davis for the district title. The Grizzlies are the champs and punched their ticket to state with a 1-0 win over Davis. Eastmont, meanwhile, advanced to uh, face Davis with a 1-0 win over Wenatchee. Wildcat junior Aaron Leon scored the game's lone goal in the second half. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Weisen had the call on the NCW Life channel. It's a penalty kick. Edgar Leon himself. Right-footed shot. Leon the shot and the stop! Tanner Russell coming up huge. Golden opportunity by the wayside for the Eastmont Wildcats and Tanner Russell. I'm sure that's out, out without touching it. Arredondo. Defensive header doesn't quite work. A good opportunity for Aaron Leon. Left-footed shot. Go, 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 go! A miscue on the back line of Wenetje. I believe it was Landeros who tried to head it and instead it became almost a pass to Aaron Leon who then cleared a path and delivered a nice shot from the left side. I'd be surprised if this 1-0 stands. Punched away by Arredondo. Cleared yeah. away by the back line of Eastmont. The shot from way outside. And Arredondo, does he manage to keep it in bounds? The referee, assistant referee said no. He'll touch. And they have Chilena. My goodness, that almost tricked everybody. Is a product of communities that um the shot the and the diving stop by Arredondo could be the last best try probably for the Panthers I'm confused why Tanner's not up in the action right now um, yeah I he's mean, a he's a midfield midfield is is one but just bring him into the box I yeah. mean what do you got to lose right yeah hey Shani Vega and now there's Tanner everybody in white is inside at least the D there's the shot Bounces off the one-man wall. Oh my goodness. The keeper's way out of position. Oh, good stuff by Edgar. Another try. The long ball now. That's, That's not going to hurt him. And That's the game. That is the game. Eastmont has vanquished its biggest rival in dramatic fashion. One goal to nil. Eastmont travels to Davis tomorrow at 1 o'clock with a winner to uh, advance to state. The loser season is over. The Apple Bowl is the site for final rounds of the District 6 AB soccer tournaments tomorrow. Kashmir and Bridgeport meet at 2 with a winner advancing to state. Cascade plays Quincy for the district title at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okanagan baseball's team advanced to the District 6 2B tournament yesterday. The Bulldogs held off Brewster 6 4 to end the Bears season. The 1B tournament resumes today with the champion Championship between Moses Lake Christian and Riverside Christian. East Mono Moses Lake face off at Larson Playfield today for the District 6 4A championship. District 6 1A tournament will be played in Efreda tomorrow with Chelan playing Cashmere in the first semifinal at noon. That's followed by Quincy and Omak in the other semifinal at 2. The winners will face off for the chance to go to state in the district championship at 4 o'clock. The Big Nine softball season wraps up today with two double headers of note. Wenatchee's playing at Sunnyside while East Mono is hosting. Moses Lake. Wildcats could claim the regular season title with a sweep of the Mavericks today. District 6 2B tournament has Brewster at Okanagan while Lake Roosevelt is hosting Tadaskit. The CWAC district tournament gets underway tomorrow with Efreda at East Valley while Othello is hosting Sela. Omak and Cascade wrap up the CTL regular season tomorrow with a double header that starts at 11 a.m. That's a look at sports news. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Hi everybody, Dan Coons, host of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Of course, this Sunday is Mother's Day. And before I forget to all of you mothers out there on Sunday, happy birthday. I hope you have a great day. We have a whole bunch of really good shows lined up for you next week. I mean, just good shows. Just a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of shows lined up for you next week. We invite you to start each and every workday and weekday at 7 a.m. live right here with Wake Up in Anchee Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more news from around North Central Washington, you can find us at ncwlife.com, on our social media channels, or on our mobile app for iPhone and Android. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-6295. 
I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there and enjoy the beautiful weekend.